Hello, there is Fimpossible Creations and welcome in next tutorial for Ragdoll Animator 2. In this tutorial I will show you how to use extra features. It's a big part of a plugin which allows you to do many cool stuff without writing a code. It also unlocks many important things. Let me show you how to use it. Let's go! So there I have character with the default setup of the Ragdoll Animator 2. Go to Extra and hit the search button. There you see selector of built-in extra features. You can also hit the plus button to add empty field for the feature and assign it using a reference file. It can be useful when you write your own extra feature. There is file with list of extra features with short description when you go to the directory of the Ragdoll Animator and there you see the file with a list. You will find there also another document with list of utility user methods. Now to introduce you, let's start with something basic. Let's say we want to make character muscles be weaker gradually when switching to fall mode. And we don't want to change it instantly like with a springs value on fall mode. But automate this to make animation look more realistic. And to do this we can go to extra, add extra feature helpers and spring power on fall mode. There you see short description with purpose of this feature and its parameters. So you can choose the spring power for fall mode and how long the transition should take. This extra feature is using internal override value so you will see the true spring value here in brackets. And you can still use it in combination with springs value on fall mode. So you can make initial value for falling lower and then transition it to the desired value. Alright, now let's say we don't want character to lie on the ground all the time, but we want it to get up. And for this we will use more complex extra feature, which is called auto get up. Here we can define conditions when character should be allowed to stand up. You can read two tips to customize it, but I will use default settings and set the ground mask. And make sure we will not detect ragdoll dummy bones as ground, so use different layer for ragdoll dummy bones. So with default settings it's allowed to get up after 0.4 seconds and when body calm down enough on the ground. Rest of the parameters we will use later in this tutorial, so for now let's skip it. Now this extra feature is triggering transition to standing mode, it's not playing the get up animation. It's transitioning things like springs value, anchor bone attach, manipulating ragdoll blend and in result it stands back again. Now let's say we want to play get up animation. And for this we will use feature called fall get up animate. It comes with many essential things for fallen animating, like the spring value transition. So we can remove the spring power on fall feature and use this. There we can choose animation to play on the animator when character starts falling mode. If you set it empty, it won't be used. But let's use fall state I have there in the animator controller. Then we can choose get up animations. My are named this way. And keep reposition on. I will show what it does in a second. Now let's test it. Active falls and getting up. And now to show you what reposition is doing. I will make character fall from the higher. Yeah, and when it's fallen you see that it disconnects with the base position of the controller. And reposition is bringing it back on get up. And actually it's not so clear where the base controller should be when character body is in lying pose. It depends on the get up animation you use. If animation origin is in center of mass, then anchor bomb bottom blends with it nicely. And to show it more clearly, let's disable these features and let's add repose base transform. Now reposition operation is called all the time when character is fallen, so we can test different reposition modes. Sometimes get up animation have origin in a feed, so then anchor to feet position will be better for it. And there are two more options, which might be useful in some specific cases. 
And you can also enable mapping rotation for the controller all the time, but in most cases it's not needed. Only get up moment requires a rotation change. And since we are talking about that, let's jump to one of the character controller demo scenes. So there we can control the character, and when we hit it three times with enough power, it falls down, get up, and we can continue moving. And there you can see that on fall and on get up events, it's switching the mover. And if I remove it, on get up, character is swapping back to the last rotation to which mover was animating it. And in this mover script, I implemented basic refresh, which is called every time mover is enabled again, and it's resetting target rotation to be up with the transform rotation and resetting its motor velocity. And thanks to that, there is nice continuous movement when you get up. The character controller you use probably implements similar method to reset this stuff. Now let's take a look on the other extra features in this character. And there you see kinematic feed switcher, which was used in the previous tutorials. It makes feed being nicely animated. For the current settings, without it, feed collides with ground and float when character rotates. Ignore collision with character controller capsule. It's just example to show you that you can ignore this way. And final one, collision events. It provides fast collision information to the script which implements this interface. When it's not detected, you get copy text area. And you can paste it in your script and implement it. Then use collision info like here. There is also other extra feature which is called collision messages, which use game object send message instead of interface, which is slower, but you can use it if it's more comfortable. And these two features are automatically generating bone collision detectors which can be used for raycasting ragdoll bones and identifying which bone was hit. Now let's switch to our demo scene and let's cover blend on collision. When you want to keep your keyframe animation intact and use physical animation only when it's needed, then blend on collision will help you. As you can see with this body physics settings, the motion would look wonky, but when we turn on blend on collision, it looks right. Then, if we collide with something, the physics are used. There is also soft limit anchor feature, which makes anchor bone attach softer when it's pushed away from its source position, and you can apply fall when it's pushed away enough. Or restore anchor bone attach when it's pushed away too far. Alright, now let's move to this example. And these characters have features which we already covered except this one. And it's another complex and tricky one. It's controlling falling pose blend tree, plus using additive body layer for animating the pose. And as you can see, this blend tree is trying to simulate human behavior when falling on face or on back. And thanks to that, the falling animation is not looking so dull. You can also watch it in action in this demo scene. Let's attach there and fall. So it's not falling limpy, but trying to react like with the instinct. Okay, since we can easily trigger get up animation there, let me explain a few parameters of auto get up and get up animate features. So for get up animation, you can use crossfade for smooth animation transition, but it can make hovering for a moment, which is caused by transitioning between line and standing animation. To solve this, you can go to auto get up and apply hips freeze for a crossfade moment. Now you can make get up animation very smooth. Quick blend fade is manipulating ragdoll blend to reduce physical motion in the middle of get up animation. And now allow standing restore. To show you this more clearly, let's go to this demo scene. Standing restore is trying to detect during fall mode if character is standing on both legs in a stable way, then triggering transition to standing mode. Then in get up animate you have option to play animation with it. Alright, that's all for this tutorial. As you saw, you can use extra features in many different ways. And don't forget about extra documents to see what's more there. Oh, I hope this video was helpful for you. 
Leave a like, subscribe for more. Thank you for watching and see you next time. Bye bye.